Hallo et bonjour à Brest. Hi, I'm Lutz Becker. I'm the head of the master's program leadership at Karlsruhe International University in Karlsruhe, Germany. And uh, Tamara and Julien, they asked me to tell you a little bit about um, history in management. Actually, I think history is a very important aspect in understanding our economy today, our society today. So the way we act in business, the way we organize our society, the way we collaborate is uh, deeply embedded into our cultural minds. And therefore, I think it's important to understand history, just to see how we got where we are today and why we got there and why we didn't went another way. So I would like to give you one example. Um, we have a current discussion about property rights and uh, German companies complain about the Chinese. Actually in the 18th century, Germany was, let's say, half a century behind England for some reasons. The first reason was the Thirty Years' War. The second reason uh, was definitely um, the little states we had in Germany. So, uh, for example, along the Rhine, we had these rubber barons, and they owned a very tiny piece of land but had a huge impact on the trade. They could, for example, take tolls, they had their own legislation and all this uh, slowed down the economic, the scientific uh, and the social development in Germany. And so um, in the time of enlightenment, so middle of the 18th century, Germany, as I said, was half a century behind England. In England, the philosophy has developed enlightenment, um, the economy has developed, and especially the technology has developed in a very fast and uh, really exciting way. And uh, this led to quite some problems. For example, in my home hometown, Solingen, which is known for cuddly um, blades. Um, this was the uh, one of the leading places for blades in the 16th century. But now England was far ahead concerning technology. technology. They produced better steels and uh, so on. And uh, actually uh, it was getting hard almost impossible to uh, sell German steel products like scissors, like knives, like weapons uh, in the international market. Especially um, the American business, which was very important at that time too, um, slowed down and uh, they, our local companies had lots of problems. Uh, so what happened? Um, many of these companies uh, sent their, for example, their sons uh, to England and uh, the families um, asked their son to collect information about the ways how the um, English people uh, produced their products, how uh, English companies are organized. And uh, these uh, Germans, uh, okay, they didn't have digital cameras like the Japanese and the Chinese today. Nevertheless, um, they got a lot of information and tried to copy the technology from England. At the same time, uh, for example, in my hometown, certain places were renamed. For example, one place was renamed to Birmingham, another was renamed to Sheffield. To, the, the reason was very simple. They tried to sell the product on the world market. And so they could stand at Sheffield and they couldn't uh, stand at Birmingham.
and even uh, the local post office accepted these new names for the places. So suddenly we had Sheffield and Birmingham in the city of Solingen. And um, after quite some time uh, the English people decided uh, to block uh, cheap imports from uh, Germany and uh, forced the German companies to stamp their products made in Germany. Actually, during that time, in the, or in the meantime, the um, technology has been improved because the locals here, they copied uh, English uh, technology and even improved the technology. And so suddenly, made in Germany, uh, was not a negative um, aspect, it was a very positive aspect and uh, the germs um, uh, won credibility in the markets and uh, had uh, growing mark uh, really growing markets. Actually, this led to a new level of competition. So there was a very strong competition between Germany on the one hand and England on the other hand and this increased the quality of the products dramatically and the economy grew in that time let's say until uh, World War I then everything was destroyed again. Nevertheless uh, uh, between let's say the middle of the 19th century and the early, tw early 20th century we had a real boom period with, uh, for new, because of new technologies, because of uh, new uh, ways to organize the companies and uh, everybody was benefiting. The important thing here is the exchange. Means the exchange of ideas between England and Germany. So the quotation and the variation to the quotation leads to technological, um, scientific or philosophical improvements in our society. And Matt Ridley, uh, who is an English author, says exchange is to cultural evolution as sex to biological evolution. He continues, at some point before 100,000 years ago, culture itself began to evolve in a way it never did in other species. That is, to replicate, mutate, compete, select, accumulate, somewhat as genes had been doing for billions of years. Just like cumulatively building an eye bit to bit, so cultural evolution in human beings could cumulatively build a culture or a camera. Only human beings have a cumulative culture that goes into the design of a loaf of bread or concerto. Thanks for listening and have a good time in Brest and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Brest somewhere. It's a beautiful city, I love it, I love the seaside and uh, it's a nice place to stay.